Greetings, dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. There is so much sacredness here. And the sacredness is generated by the intent of those in the chairs. Any time a human being will gather with another human being and say, I'm here for one reason, I want to know more. I've heard some wild stories of, of perhaps things that are beyond my understanding that might change my life, might enhance those things that I would love to enhance. That's why I'm in a chair. And this creates a field in itself. Perhaps there are those of you who could feel that and have felt that and did feel that this morning when you walked in the room. Because of the numbers that are here, there is a feel that is generated with intent that is so sacred and so beautiful. And it's seen. Oh, it's seen. You may have heard the premise that when you have a number of people gathered together that there is enhanced not just abilities and power but light itself and the with with the intent that we are speaking of it creates a field of light now we speak metaphorically but consciousness truly is a part of the physics that you study today. Is it too much to imagine that intent could be seen multidimensionally? It might even have a color, dear ones. You're very attractive when you're here with intent like this. There are so many different kinds of intent, even here in the room, even those listening. There's casual intent. I think I'll take a listen. There is intent that wants to cognize everything that is said. I want to know more because everything you've said, Cryon, has either taken place or is happening or is going to happen, and I'm on board. And between those kinds of intent, there's all the shades in between. And dear ones, all of them are appropriate. The one who simply wants to take a look is doing so with free choice. You may take a look and leave and never come back. But in that crack that you took a look, you got to see and feel the idea that you're sacred. And those who wish to cognize what is here and what is coming may enjoy the channel tonight. We told you in the channel before that the title would be this. Who do you think you are? Now that's an expression that humans would often use as an accusation. <laughs> but the question in the form of the channel tonight is real. And the reason it's being asked at all right now, the reason, you'll see in a moment. Because who you think you are shapes everything to come. Everything. Let's start this way. Let's start with the objections that some light workers have had about some of the concepts I have presented. And the objections are these. They don't work. Dear Cryon, I've heard you talk for now. 20 years, and you've said you must speak to your cells. You talk to your structure. It's listening. And I have. I've got this issue, and I've, I've been working on it, and I talk to my cells, and nothing happens. I have only one thing to conclude. It doesn't work. Dear Cryon, I've heard you talk about compassion as being the key to changing those around me, to changing myself, to 
to all of these things I've tried so hard to be compassionate doesn't work just doesn't work have you got something else dear crying I've heard you speak of God inside I don't think so certainly isn't in my life I'd like it to be I really would like it to be I listen to you and I'd like it to be but then you finish and nothing's there I'm about to expose you <laughs> oh ones who would ask the questions and I ask you who do you think you are if you had to draw a list of who you think you are what's it look like dear human being and I will start the list for you and it's fraught with bias misunderstanding disbelief ignorance and more and you don't know it you don't even know it it goes like this who do you think you are okay I'm male I'm female I am so many years old stop <laughs> you are really that's how old you are I see you I see you wrote that down in big letters that's how old you are so let's discuss age for a moment what comes with the statement how old you are and I'll tell you a tremendous bias right away you are acting out how old you're supposed to be based upon information that was given to you about others that age you realize that don't you so however old you are first of all you're older than you used to be and you don't like that that's a bias in itself aging is a bias if you don't like it it's a bias you think living for 900 years was a typo in scripture or was it true how did they do that and I'll tell you they never said I am so many years old because age meant nothing they exist in a body year after year that will age if you even want to use the word on its own schedule but if you are biased enough to put limits on it you'll go right to the place where medicine says you ought to be that is one of the biggest biases you have who do you think you are stop telling people how old you are do you realize what this carries with it if any of you watch your media have you watched the ads of how you're supposed to feel at a certain age and what drugs you're supposed to take at a certain age because of how you're supposed to feel at a certain age it's programming you are programmed to age poorly and I just said it this doesn't simply come from media it comes from your parents it comes from school it comes from society if you didn't have a stigma on how old you were would your chemistry be different bingo yes because consciousness is guiding cellular structure how you believe is being absorbed by your body and acted upon I'll say it again you show up at the restaurant called life and the menu is there and you give an order and then you start aging poorly dear ones your food has arrived you just ordered it and here it is it's as simple as that it's on the menu and you ordered it and so you you seem to feel a certain way because you have a certain age perhaps you have been told aging is a bad thing so you continually look into the mirror to see if it's a bad thing and your your body knows what you're looking for and cooperates it's a bad thing <laughs> who do you think you are number one I'm an ageless human being existing on this planet magnificently I'm an ageless human being 
existing on this planet magnificently. And my body hears every single word I'm saying. <laughs> and my cellular structure is clueless on how old I am. So don't give me a birthday party with candles. Because we're not counting. I can't tell you how much that would do for you. Who do you think you are? Well, Cryon, I have a, um, a, a genealogy that, that doesn't really work for me. You see, here's what's happened in my family. Stop. You have just now told your body that any predispositions it might have with genealogy that is inherited is going to manifest. Period. That's what you told your body. And here it comes. Did you know what has been proven? Your genealogy is not in charge. Oh, it will come with inheritance. It will come with perhaps what you will call predispositions. Now predispositions are there. They may even manifest. But dear ones, that's only if nothing happens around them. The cells of your body are designed to listen to the boss. The cells of your body are designed to listen to the boss. They are ready to be programmed. And the consciousness that you give them is the programming they will respond to better than anything else on the planet. You can program yourself out of any inheritance. Did you know that? Just like you can program your age and the amount that you age is programmable. The amount of energy you have is programmable. And the programming to your cells comes from that which we call intent. There it is again. Consciousness, intent, can program a human being so that they can last longer, not be attracted to disease, come through life in a way that is spectacular in its peacefulness and its beauty and its elegance instead of having to suffer through it. Number three, you don't know what's happened to me, Cryon. No, but you just told your body that whatever has happened is just awful. And that just means that whatever happens is going to aid you and it's going to make you a victim. You programmed yourself to be a victim. And if you didn't, others have. And it just depends upon who you listen to about who is God, what the relationship is, or whether you were born dirty or magnificent. Programmed to suffer. Who do you think you are? Well, so far, you're aging badly, your genealogy is horrible, and you're a victim. <laughs> who do you think you are? That's who you think you are. I could go on and on. <laughs> but here's what I want to show you. If that's who you are, how do you think that one thing that you're going to change is then going to going to correct everything so the ones who say well that doesn't work cry and give me something better have already decided who they are and they're used to a system that is linear you may call it allopathic it's not the right word a system that is linear says this no matter who you are no matter what you've suffered no matter what your genealogy what if you take a pill it will help doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, it's going to help. And of course you may have to take it again and again, but you get help. That's not this way, it's not the way it works, dear ones, not with spirituality. The truth is this, how you think you are, and what you believe you are, is the precursor to all of the things I teach working. Did I say that correctly? You've got to change your belief before any of these things are going to come to fruition in your life. If you're going to talk to yourselves, you can't give me a list. 
that says, here's who I am. Now I'm going to talk to my cells and it's going to change everything. You got to start at the beginning. And the beauty of this teaching is this. Once you start to cognize the fact that you are magnificent in the eyes of God, of nature, you belong here, everything starts to snap in place. Because truth has that about it. It rings in your body. The cellular structures will, if they could talk, they will say, well, it's about time. <laughs> what do you have for us today? What's your order today? What's on the menu today? How about health and peace and you name it? What about a system where the years don't matter? That there's no stigma anymore. That your body has to do something at a certain time because you've assigned numbers to it. This is not true. It isn't. And so in this channel, the beauty of the message is this that when you begin to realize who you are things start to chain react and they affect others things in benevolent ways it's almost like the truth rings in your cellular structure to such a degree in such a way the strings on a guitar for instance that are that are tuned together and you you pluck one and the vibration affects the other and it comes into tune and affects the other one it starts to vibrate and come into tune and soon the body gets it and then all the things you've been telling each each string for all these years and all these points one two three four they start to drop away and you start to realize that that just wasn't right that wasn't right. Here's something we brought up before. This is important, dear ones. It has to do with the integrity of knowledge. This is important. Some of the most profound things you may have learned from your instructors, your instructors from, from your priests, through your shamans, are now starting to drop away in their accuracy. And in that, you feel you will betray them if you cross over to a new truth. That is very real. And you will say, well, but my parents gave me this. And it's what I believe. The, the, Mom and dad, they gave me the best they could. It's what I believe. I really loved this pastor I had, and, and he was just the best man. He's gone now, but I, I'll always remember what he told me. And that's the way I live my life right now. And suddenly we come along with a whole different idea that goes beyond any of that. And many won't move off that peg because of this. The integrity of the people that you loved who gave you truths that now are starting to slip away. And how do, you, how do you get through that? Well, there are several ways. Number one, if they're deceased, they now know better. They're here. They're cheering you on. <laughs> but number two, in your memory, they were giving you in full integrity the best they had. The best they had. And there's nothing wrong with that. If they had what you know today, do you think that they would give that to you? They would. So there's nothing shameful at all or betraying about moving forward and accepting a bigger truth. You control your biology. You control not only how you age and how fast you age, but what happens chemistry as you age. This is so important because part of the scenario is how disease would attach itself to you. I've told you before that as human consciousness starts to evolve to a higher level, it will change the entire body. Because all of your cells are receptors and listening for instructions. And a higher consciousness will give higher kinds of instructions. And in that, eventually, there will be a body 
that will not accept disease because it's smarter than it used to be. You all understand that you have something called the smart body. And again, I'm going to give you the example of how consciousness works like homeopathy. You accept homeopathy. Interesting, isn't it, that the fact that this country doesn't have much homeopathy is political. And it's not what you think. It doesn't really have to do with your medicine. It has to do with what happened with the English. <laughs> when you became Americans and won that war, by the way, you did, you threw away everything European. You threw away their accent, you threw away their medicine, you threw away their religion. You didn't want anything to do with the Church of England. On and on. And part of that was homeopathy. And today when you go to Europe, it's everywhere. And here, it's nowhere. Let's talk about that. Not the fact that it's no, it, 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 it's anywhere you want to find it, dear ones, in your country. You can find it. But the idea of it, it's a conceptual idea that works with, with the body. Again, we tell you this. Listen to this and, and, and understand the logic. A tincture is a design of a minuscule chemical that would send a signal to the body of what the one using the tincture is asking for in healing or peace not limited only to chemistry and the science will look at the tincture and say it's too small for a chemical reaction anywhere anytime it's simply too small therefore it cannot do anything chemically and they're right they're right and yet it works so here is the answer to why it works and the truth about it which will tie right into the theme of who do you think you are. A tincture under the tongue is an instruction set that's designed that under the tongue, sublingually, the body receives an axon. Did you get that? So no chemical reaction. It is an instruction set, elegantly designed, as that which is instructions to the body on what to do. And then the body does it. And homeopathy works. All right, turn the page. I've just shown you something. I've just shown you proof. The body is listening. The cells want instructions. And you can do it several ways. And one of them, proven, is homeopathy. And the other one is with consciousness. What about consciousness elegantly designed through words that you would say or thoughts that you would generate when you answer the questions, who do you think you are? Because the body receives the instructions that you give it through everyday life. Are you a victim or not? What's your genealogy like? How old are you? I tied this into this morning when I said, I want you to forget everything you were told. Everything that would then posture who you think you are. And start over. You want to write a list? Do it. Read it out loud? Do it. Let the body hear it? Do it. I am an ageless human, magnificently, here on purpose to create light. My genealogy is controllable and programmable. And I give it instructions daily. And you go on from there. The things that happen in my life, I have brought to myself. And now, in that I understand it, I will no longer bring negative things into my life. What are your weaknesses? Don't list them. <laughs> I am afraid of this or that. 
And instead, you will say the opposite. These are things that used to bother me, which I have conquered. And your body hears it and sees it. And they are simple things. They're habits that you can cure instantly. As easy as my partner did with being seasick all of his life. And in one session, he was no longer. Dear ones, this is the power you have. And it's not simply about ridding yourself of some awful disease. It's everyday life. One of the attributes you might say, I get anger, I get angry easily. If you said that, and you think that's you, you will get angry easily. I have buttons that people press when they talk about religion and politics. My mother bothers me. I have trouble with my family. And the body hears it all. That's who I am. Who do you think you are? That's who I am. And you think you can come to a meeting and hear something about how to correct this or that and try it and it's going to work? It isn't. Until you start knowing who you are. Coming along with the program shouldn't shock you. Truth is beautiful. You are none of those things you thought you were. The idea of having trouble with this person or that person is reprogrammable. Honestly, I want you to try it. We've said this over and over. To walk into the cauldron of drama that used to bother you with a new attitude and watch what happens when you tell your body, these things are not going to bother me or hurt me. I'm going to have peace and I'm going to see God in those people. That's what I'm going to do. And it takes practice, doesn't it? But it works. Have any of you noticed that when you start doing that, the people that bother you leave? <laughs> because they're not getting the reaction anymore. If they can't leave because they're related, they stop bothering you. Because they're not getting the reaction anymore. You've discon disconnected the button. And so you can stand there and start erasing the things on your list. This person bothers me. I can't do this. I can't do that. And pretty soon you see you have a clean slate of magnificence. And you start to realize, I'm in control. I really am in control. And then you can start talking to yourselves and then you can start doing the things that we have told you about over and over that work and they work and they work. But you can't just walk in as a victim with diseases knowing their genealogy is awful, aging badly and expect to plug in these things and have a miracle. Is that offensive to you or does it make sense? The biggest one, I said four times already, I am born magnificent. I'm here on purpose. I'm here for a reason. I can manufacture light. If there are enough like me on this planet, we'll all manufacture light. And the whole planet is going to change. What about that? Maybe you came here today to hear that. Who do you think you are? I am talking to old souls who can do everything I've said. You've been here and you've done that. You have an akash that is filled with wisdom of how things work. What I've just given you is not pablum for the soul. It's advanced. But I'm talking to those who I should be talking to, who know of what I speak. I'm in cryon in love with humanity. And so it is. <laughs>